So a bit of a shortened day for me because I do have to catch a flight um, later today. But got a few smaller trades in today. DGLY, they had offering pre-market and uh, that's what I shorted. But they, they, these people, they know what they're doing. After they dropped the offering, they immediately announced another PR about some agreement or some partnership. The same shit like that as the last 10 times but they're really good at propping the stock up and i took a tiny profit and stopped out on the rest i don't want to fight these kind of low float manipulative stocks like dgly so that's the first tiny trade on um, pre-market the other one i traded is enob enob this one i actually started short early on and stopped out when it seems like we're gonna keep on ripping towards 20 dollars and once i see a rejection from this 1950s that's why i went back in and reshorted as you can see here reshorted here and added some more once it was staying heavy and we tried to retest but this retest got rejected again and that's why i added back even more covered some before the market opens and the majority here on this flush because we dropped basically from 15 dollars all the way to nine dollars so i want to cover some added back some more seeing that we're staying heavy and we didn't reclaim vwap and go higher added some more covered here and covered here and I was all out again like I said before <laughs> I have a shortened day so you know I, I didn't want to be, be stuck for an all day grind but in hindsight you know it dropped another dollar or so after I covered um, ENOB the other stock was also pretty good CCL on this one I had a lot of re-entries because you know I was thinking that we had a huge gap up over the weekend and we can potentially fade off the gap and retest the downside to 22s but you know had some really good entries covered into the flush but i never got the huge move of a sell-off down to 22s that i was looking for and once it starts holding that's what i covered but i'm really happy about my patience and working around my core size basically i always had the core position short on ccl and only adding on the resistance around here and once we break down vwap and staying heavy that's why I, you know reshorted and covered some but you know i thought we were really really gonna flush here around 23s but once we start holding that's why i got out i don't want to fight this kind of trend ftsi this is one of those low float low volume pumps so you gotta be careful when you know who's involved in this kind of stock but the stock basically ripped from 14 to 18 and after the unhold the volume just disappeared and when the uh, volume is really light on this kind of low float it's it's most likely gonna sell off right because you need volume to prop the stock up to have it keep on going but once it, the volume disappears there's no one else to buy so the stock basically tanked from 18 down to 15 and i was all out around 14 dollars but it did go all the way down to 12 dollars near the end of the day ivr is another nice winner on a day i wasn't planning on trading this until i see the huge volume spike show up on my trade idea scanner the stock you can see basically went from six dollars all the way to eight dollars parabolic and whenever we have a parabolic move to the upside uh we'll most likely gonna have a drastic pullback on the downside as well and that's where i scaled in short I'm risking the 830s 840s area you can see this wick here that means this run up this breakout was sold into i'm sure it covered some and cover some more didn't want to you know get bent if it, we keep on going higher to like ten dollars but we did stay really heavy and that's why i covered majority of my size we hit some shorts on the bounces and was all out around 670s so that's a pretty nice uh, parabolic short over here. And you can see the stock later tanked to $6 and reclaim later on. So this will most likely be in play again tomorrow. This stock, man, like <laughs> looking back, this just kind of went from basically, you know, $40 all the way to 60 pull back to 50 and now testing $94 after hours just crazy I was long the front side and shorting the parabolic downside like the stock like just talked about IVR I was long here sold into the push and after we I think we unhalted and you know the same idea as a parabolic short setup right as the other stock I'm sure that the backside you know from about 57 and covered here around here 54 we hit 
with some smaller size a lot this time around on the reshort $54 and covered all of it at $52 I didn't want to outstay my welcome and the, the price action on the stock later around this area was kind of sketchy as well so and so I never re-entered the stock but it looks like you know markets on steroids everything just keep on going higher both the large caps and the small cap penny stocks it just a crazy crazy market we're in right now a lot of opportunities for both the long side and the short side so i actually didn't get to trade on tuesday because i was traveling but i did trade on wednesday um, but here are some executions i just didn't get to set up and record the recap dpw i was short bias on the stock so i shorted you can see you know five dollars touch shorted around 480s after that five dollars rejection and you know, shorted it down added some more on the pops um, towards 460s but I was out most of it at low $4 I think the low was uh, 410 I tried to re-add but I had to cut the stock short cut my short position for a small loss on the re-entry because of this volume squeeze right we're seeing a lot of these low flows yeah they will pop and it seems like they're dead really early on but whenever there's a volume on me it's a low float I think five or six million shares float it's very easy to manipulate so you don't want to fight it right whether you're long or short you don't want to fight the volume you just want to join the trend and join the price action can be too short biased on these kind of stocks especially in this market where everything just you know squeezing higher and higher so i took the loss on reshorts and actually flipped long never in a million years where i think i'd be going long on the third stock like dpw uh, so i actually took a long around four sorry 540s so some here and actually we added around 560s and was all out six dollars and uh, six 30s or 620s at this point and I just left the stock alone so I think I actually made more money on the long side than the short side so DPW you know just an example that you cannot be too overly biased long or short right long the front side short the back side react to the price action the second stock I traded JFIN you can see I'm just using tiny tiny share sizes all these arrows are maybe you know 200 shares max just because you know I'm settling into my trading station and the internet is not as good as the one I have at home obviously but it's still doable right you don't need big sizes to make your day this this was already more than what I used to make in a day at my job. So JFIN, I wasn't sure what the stock was going to do early on. And that's why I didn't have any entry early, just because the volume was so low. And once we unhold it down, you know, I you know, went in shorts, just like a lot of short sellers, I'm sure. They're saying, you know, at least that's what I was thinking at the time. Oh, there's no volume on the stock. It seems like we're just going to go back to $6 or $5. And boy, was I wrong. You can see I did cover. So, you know, it wasn't like I was holding a huge position around $10 short average. Re-added around 14 20s. And I was all out, honestly, all out, most of it here. You know, I, had, I was up on the short side on JFIN until I took the loss because of the squeeze out of nowhere. It's very interesting because it kind of did exactly what uh, DPW did, right? The kind of money rotation kind of went from DPW to the stock and then between the stock after they are done with this, they went to DPW instead. So it's very interesting when you're trading these uh, small cap low floats. You know, I took a loss on the short. You know, I gave back all the profits here. And I think at one time I was down uh, $500 on the short side. No problem. You know, there's still plenty of uh, opportunities to recover. So I actually flip long. So, you know, today is one of those days that I didn't think I would ever, you know, go long on these kind of third stocks. Because again, this stock was up on no news, right? It's a sketchy, if you look at a daily chart on JFIN, it's very sketchy. But I flipped long, you know, flipped long and actually made more money on the long side um, than the short side and recovered um, my losses on the on the short. You know, it's very sketchy. I know that's why I didn't go back in for more secondary short or long. And I don't want to, you know, you know, get stuck long or short in this kind of manipulation here. So let's talk about the loser on the day first, which is Grubhub. You know, honestly, this one is just poor entry and poor execution on my part. I shorted the weakness because I was thinking we are breaking down this clear support level around 6180s. So I shorted the breakdown, but you know, you can see that 
break down really quickly, reclaimed, and I just out for a loss. So, but I didn't re-enter later on. The better entry on the short side would have been, you know, around this, you know, almost sixty-four dollars area, sixty-three eighties. That would have been the better entry, but you know, so I didn't. I, I realized that I chased early on and I cut it really quick. So tiny loss on this one. And on, honestly, the miss of the day was Tesla. You can see I longed it here and I sold it here. And then after I sold, the stock went to a thousand seventeen. So it is what it is. You know, I love day trading. You know, I'm so good at it. I catch everything. Never, man. You can just trade according to your plan. You know, the plan was, you know, if it stays heavy, I'm going to cut it because the entire market is, was selling off at the time, at least at the open. So that's why, you know, I want to make sure I get out. I don't want to get, you know, get dumped on if the stock does sell off towards 970. But, you know, looking back at this, it's just like, oh, wow, there's like 10 point, 20 points upside that I missed. It is what it is, man. You, you can't catch everything. So the biggest winner for me was MRNA. Well, it was pretty big until I gave back over here. So, you know, definitely not a perfect day. And no am I saying I'm the perfect trader because I'm definitely not. You know, I, I made some good trades on the stock. Short, they was up with some you know vaccine news about advancements there to phase three but again it's one of those pr games where the title you know seems really really nice just to pump the stock up but you know i shorted a stock you know you know using this in you know, a previous high around pre-market highs shorted um 64 80s and you know we shorted some but was out at a 63 40s just because you know volume was still strong i think the stock is gonna go higher you know i'm a good thing i cut covered and took the profit even though you know that could have been just a tiny tiny gain but i did reshort around 66 60s and pretty much top ticked it covered some but re-added after seeing i was staying really heavy you know covered into the flush and i tried the re-entry didn't work you know i tried it again and now just the trades following the first one first two really just not as clean as you know the first few trades so you know made small profit here but you know here is where i started giving back and this is where i realized okay this is probably should be the last trade of the day for me because usually when I start giving back profits that's that's a sign that you know I, I'm over trading so reshorted here and shorted some more on this weakness you know very similar as what I did on Grubhub but whenever I realize I'm chasing the weakness I cover right away and try to reshort here and then you know gave back some more so it is what it is you know gave back some profits on mRNA short but I stopped myself before you know I let things go even worse and you know the hot stuff on the day was WAFU. This one, you know, for the first time ever, center point failed me because I couldn't locate any stock short on the stock. And it was so much opportunity, you know, both on the long side and short side. But I will say, you know, I'm, I'm overly more short biased on the stock. I, mean, I did short some with trade zero, but the short locate fees were really expensive at trade zero. So I didn't trade any anything big only a couple hundred shares so it is what it is you know tiny gain on the stock overall but I'm, again i'm very happy that i can still churn up some you know decent profits with just tiny share sizes avoiding any stress and any headache and i don't want to get stuck in this kind of you know midday grind on the way down on the stock or any other you know penny stocks so today's definitely one of those days where I learned that you shouldn't trade while you are really jet lagged. And especially when the internet speed uh, in the hotel, even with an Ethernet cable, it's still subpar. Man, I was just so slow with my entries, my exits, and my take profits. And I would just, like, like in my men mentally, and my reaction time just really slowed down. So, you know, today only ended with a tiny, tiny gain and uh, definitely minimized a lot of upside uh, because I was slow to add. You can see, you know, the ads were not great. I started really early on CTIB, you know, early on and well, I was short and had a really nice average. But these are the places where I should have added. And this was, you know, 
a, a nice ad before the open on the short side nice covers but the ad after that was just terrible i should have added on the push towards eight dollars you know why eight dollars previous you know pre-market support you can see that's how fast we rejected twice actually so those would have been the better places to add minimized a lot of gains you can see the stock later tanked from six dollars down to 430 and I, the reason i knew there would be a lot of meat on the bone to on the downside is because of the run yesterday right from 250 all the way to you know to 12 dollars so you know just smoking on this one and gave back some on the secondary um ads so stock that I did a little bit better on is KBSF. This is a stock that I'm very familiar with. It's it's known to be always almost always a pump and dump. You know, can see you know when they started pumping this, I tried a long, didn't do great. This is where I started in a starter size on the short side. The borrows were kind of expensive, so I didn't have a big size on it or anything. But you no, know, very similar chart as uh, CTIB, right? Gapped up pre market and started selling off. And uh, I was anticipating this to run a little bit higher to be honest kbsf i didn't add a lot pre-market because obviously you know my focus was on ctib and i want to try to focus on one stock at a time and just leave just starter size on all the other stocks i'm playing that's something that i'm doing while i'm traveling remote and also i think kbsf could have ran to seven dollars or eight dollars on the daily chart you can see the high of pre-market was already six dollars so you no know, it's a low float so definitely could have done it but you no know, at the open was just kind of dumped right away and that's why I went back in added some more uh, never got to a full size again my focus was on CTIB and cover it on the way down cover some more and rehit it one time but you know it seems like it was gonna curl so I stopped out on the rehit and had a one more scalp over here around uh, 350 down to 310 and the stock just tanked way down to 270 these kind of turd stocks they almost always go back to where they come from <laughs> <laughs> so the trade that was poorly executed for me was on CHNR. You can see the stock opened really weak. You can see the volume just kind of dropped off right at the open. And no, uh, we had 2 million shares at the open, but then we went down to $600,000. And right out of nowhere, we had a uh, 3 million, 4 million volume. And that squeezed all the way to the test uh, pre-market highs and caught on that. And that was too slow to cover. You can see I had some small size. Admittedly, the size was really small because I was focused on CTIB but still like I was way too slow to cut it reaction time and everything just not a good trade on my part so I actually covered the first short on the high of the day so you know that was a loser on the first trade but I did rehit it um that's a silver lining out of this you know I lost smaller size I did rehit it with you know smaller size as well after this um pre-market high reject right Tex textbook rejection candle right here you see this wick around the pre-market highs that means you know that was a short squeeze and we don't have enough buying volume to push it higher towards you know seven dollars or eight dollars so you know i rehit it covered some and rehit it some more and then cover some on the flush and cover more on this uh dip to 380s and we re reshorted again about this four dollars mark and i left it alone at 350s and the stock just tanks so definitely sticking to my rules today uh you know focusing on one stock at a time if i want to go full size and uh you know just just taking it a lot slower when mine is definitely slower and very jet lagged but hopefully you know everything will be back to normal next week i'll still be trading from a hotel room but you know mentally i want to be back next week Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and the bad jokes. If you want to see more day trading content, make sure to subscribe and follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more. If you'd like to trade with me daily and get my free weekend watch list and trading journal, make sure to check out the links below for more resources. Stay green, stay positive, and I'll see you guys next time.